What's up YouTube? It's Andrea here at VW Family Farm and today I'm going to make a video. This is an update video actually. I've already put out videos on how to make my goat's milk soap and goat's milk lotion as well as a coconut oil soap recipe, but I've been doing these for a while but it has probably been a year or more since I made those videos for y'all. That was some of my early videos. I've learned a lot since then, so this video is gonna have some updates on if you are interested in starting to make those things on mistakes you can avoid that I've learned by doing. And today is about goat's milk lotion. So here is, and I call this goat's milk lotion, but let me make a disclaimer, I started a little while ago having to use cow's milk. So I use cow's milk in my lotion and in my soap because Emily is allergic to goat's milk. She was having really bad reactions when using my goat's milk products. She has uh, reacted badly to being around um, deer before and that obviously is in the goat family as well. So we had to tweak this. This is actually made with cow's milk but I call it goat's milk lotion and soap uh, to my family because that's what the recipe is called that I follow, but mine is actually cow's milk lotion, and I love it just the same. It, it has just the same effects on our skin um, as far as like uh, it's healing, it's gentle and, and soothing, um, especially when you get one you're not allergic to. So this is a lot more soothing and healing for Emily, but I haven't noticed any differences between the goat's milk and the cow's milk products. So there's that. But I'm gonna say goat's milk throughout this video because that's what this original recipe I used in it, and most of you probably will use that too. So first things first, if you're gonna make goat's milk lotion, is you're obviously gonna need goat's milk. Now, I've had a lot of questions over um, the time that we've been on YouTube about using powdered goat's milk in lotion and soap. A lot of people do that. I hear it works just fine. It's just a powder that you buy in a can. I believe it's white and purple is the most popular one I've seen. You just mix this powder with, I believe, water and boom, you have goat's milk. It's like instant milk. Um, I've never done that. So my disclaimer is I have never actually done that, but I've heard a lot of people have success with it. A lot of recipes you see online or whatever um, just show substituting instead of the milk, you substitute that mixture that you mix up yourself. And I'm sure the can tells you how to do that. So go for it. Let me know how it works. I feel like it will work just fine. I just want you to know I have not actually done this. This is actually milk from our cow. And when I began this, I was using milk from our goats. So this is actually raw milk from our farm. Now, suppose you don't have a cow or a goat, but you buy some from a neighbor's farm that's raw. Then what? What are you gonna do then? Do you just go ahead and put that in your recipe? No, you don't. For lotion, you definitely need to pasteurize your milk first because all that good beneficial bacteria and things that are in raw milk, because bacteria is not all bad. We've coined that term um, bacteria and it conjures up bad thoughts, like that is something bad gonna make you sick. And there is bad bacteria, but there's good bacteria too. But you don't want any kind of bacteria in a sterile product like lotion or something that you are going to try to preserve and um, keep at shelf stable for a long period of time. So first step first is pasteurize the milk. And this is what I wanted to make sure and tell you. Uh, on this video is how simple that can be, especially if you have an Instant Pot. Now the process of pasteurizing milk is simply heating it up to 180 to kill all the bacteria, and then the quicker you cool it down, the better, as far as for flavor and um, smell and all kinds of things like that. So how can you pasteurize milk really simply? Well, you can just use a pot and heat it up to 180, keep check on the temperature, and then cool it down really quickly by putting that pot in a sink full of ice water. That's one option, that's what I've done in the past. But if you have an Instant Pot, you are sitting on a treasure. And all the Instant Pots come with this book. This is your user manual. And it will tell you exactly how to pasteurize milk. If you uh, turn to page 16 of this user's manual, it tells you that the first step to pasteurize milk is heated up to 180. And here's how you do that. If you have one of the fancier models, I don't have one of those. I have a more basic model. 
Um, if yours has a yogurt function, you just press yogurt and then you press adjust to the more mode and then you will see the word boil on the display. It's that simple. Um, and then that's all you do. Put your lid on. I put mine in the venting position. It's going to heat your milk up to 180 when what is in your pot, your milk reaches 180. It's going to beep and it's going to say the word yogurt on your screen and you have just pasteurized your milk. Now I take that inner pot and I leave the um, lid that locks onto the Instant Pot. I go ahead and set that back on the pot of milk and then I put that in an ice bath in the sink. Just ice and water in the sink to cool that down super rapidly. And that's all there is to it. Your milk is pasteurized. And you can use that method if you just want to pasteurize milk um, just to drink. So that's your first step is pasteurize your milk. Okay, so let's get busy and let's make some lotion. I'm going to show you how simple this is. Um, so let's head over to the kitchen. The recipe for this will be down in the description in case you don't get everything written down through the course of this video. You can jump down there and have the written recipe. So let's go get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna need to make lotion is a really good scale because everything in this recipe is by weight. Let me stress that. When you read the recipe down in the description and you see ounces, that's ounces by weight. Even down to the essential oils I'm gonna put in it, I'm going to weigh everything that goes in here. So if you get one of these, this is just a little digital scale. This came from Walmart. Get one wherever um, you buy groceries and household items. So you can sell my scale, it's at zero, but I don't know if you can tell when I put this bowl on here, it's taking the weight of the bowl into consideration. It's, it says it's like two pounds and 12 ounces. I'm gonna zero mine out again. So if yours has this button, mine has zero and mode. I zeroed it out again and I don't know if y'all can see it, but now it's at zero again. So all I'm weighing is what's going in the bowl. That's one tip. And then um, the first four ingredients, I'm just gonna put in this bowl, just one right after the other, counting up on this scale instead of having 15 bowls dirty weighing each individual thing i'm just going to pour very slowly and weigh each one in this bowl you'll see what i mean in just a minute so this is just my way of not dirtying a ton of dishes in this process so i need 3.4 ounces of sweet almond oil so I'm just gonna pour slowly and try not to go over. Now I went over 0.2 ounces. I don't stress about that, um, but I might shave the 0.2 off of this avocado oil. Okay, so I'm gonna put two ounces of avocado oil. So the 3.4 that I was supposed to have of almond, now I'm just gonna go up two ounces to 5.4. Okay. Next is two ounces of stearic acid. So at that point, we should be up to 7.4. So I just try to pour slowly so I don't go over very much, if any, okay? And the last ingredient in this bowl is emulsifying wax. I'm gonna put 2.4 ounces. And I have been asked, can you substitute beeswax here and I've actually tried that myself and no you cannot it does not does not act the same you will need a recipe that calls for beeswax and I'm honestly not sure if you can make a soft liquidy lotion with beeswax so you need emulsifying wax next step I'm gonna pop this in my microwave I don't use the microwave much but I do use it on this lotion making process probably going to do about two minutes. We have to get this wax and this stearic acid um, incorporated and it needs to be totally liquefied. No chunks of emulsifying wax left. Now here's where I do use a different bowl um, and I've zeroed out my uh, scale again. Sorry if the microwave's loud in the background, but this is how I really do it in real life. I run that while I am weighing up my shea butter. That's my next ingredient. And I need 2.4 ounces of that. You don't want to microwave shea butter or you'll wind up with a gritty, grainy lotion. So that's why I'm weighing it separately. It will not get added in until after I've microwaved.
Okay, so as you can see, this is not all dissolved. I'm gonna stir it a bit and see if it dissolves. If not, I'll pop it back in there for just a bit more, maybe 20, 30 more seconds. I need to get this all incorporated together. And I think I'm gonna do that. So as you can see, the wax is all melted. I'm gonna stir it and go ahead and get all the rest of it incorporated together. And it's pretty much becoming just clear oil at this point. That's what you're going for. You can see it's all just about melted. Now, if you kind of chop up your shea butter at this point, it's gonna melt faster. If you put it in there in one hard glob, it may take a bit. But you're just going to put this in here at this point and let the hot oils melt it gently instead of microwaving it. At this point, while the oils sit there and melt the shea butter, we're gonna get our water and milk mixed together. We're gonna use another bowl. Another tip here is make sure everything's good and clean. Um, you don't wanna introduce bacteria into your lotion. Um, so we're going to mix together 18 ounces of milk and 18 of water. And again, I just do this in one bowl. So mine is gonna go up to one pound, two ounces. Okay. And then I'm gonna get some water, at ideally distilled water. So I'm gonna add 18 ounces of water now, and I'm gonna go up to two pounds, four ounces if you're adding it all into the same bowl. And I go slow so I can stop when I get to that point. Now microwave this for two minutes. Now again, the microwave's running in the background because I'm microwaving that milk and water, but this is literally how I do it. Now I will get my uh, preservative and my essential oils ready for the last step. This is Optifin. It's from Brambleberry, my preferred company for soap and lotion supplies and uh, I will use 0.4 of this. I've been asked before, is it four ounces or 0.4? It is 0.4, so do not use four ounces. That would be way too much. I like this one because it's formaldehyde free. It's the safest, most natural one if preservatives can be natural. This is uh, one that um, met my expectations more than others. I like to do things as natural as possible. So this is Optifin and it's worked like a charm every time. Now next I will weigh up my essential oils. I'm gonna use in this batch, I'm gonna use rosemary and eucalyptus. Again, I got um, essential oils from Brambleberry for soap making and lotion making. I generally love to use Young Living uh, I'm using a blend of both in this recipe, and I'm gonna use half an ounce. If you're interested in the best essentials around, in my opinion, and I don't sell oils necessarily, although I'm signed up to where I could, I just basically use them. My opinion is Young Living is definitely the best. Um, however, in soap and lotion making, it would make my products so extremely expensive, um, so I choose to keep them a little more affordable, and I'm not as picky. I am picky on them in that Brambleberry standards meet my expectations for soap and lotion making. But definitely if you were gonna ingest essentials, I would say check out Young Living and I've got a link below for them as well. So I'm gonna use half an ounce. I'm going to try to stop at 0.2 or three. Okay, that's 0.3 of the rosemary. And then I'm gonna use some eucalyptus to finish this out. And that only took it up to 0.4, but that's okay. I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna put more rosemary because I don't want it to just be all rosemary smelling. So I've got those ready. My oils and my preservative. Okay, it's time to finish this up. It's so crazily simple. It literally takes me minutes. The main time consuming part of it is get all your supplies out. Um, over here on the floor behind Lane filming me, I've got a Rubbermaid tote with all my soap and lotion supplies. I used to stash them here, there, and everywhere in all my cabinets. And I just found out, you know what, if I keep them all together, then when I'm ready to make stuff, I'm ready to go. And I can just pull it out and I'm ready. And this takes no time at all. So let's finish this up. So you can see the shea butter all got melted in just that few minutes of me working on everything else. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to press up these little tiny lumps, but it's not a huge deal because they're gonna get blended up anyway. 
Okay, so the point of warming the milk and water was just to knock the chill off of it and get it a little warm. You don't really have to worry with what actual temperature it is. And then the recipes I've read say when you combine the water and milk with the oils, pour it really slowly and blah, blah, blah. I'm just being honest with y'all how I do this. I just take it and I do that. I just pour it right in. You can see there's clumps in there now, clumps of wax and all kinds of stuff. It's kind of separated back out because it kind of cooled off the wax again. It's fine. It's all going to get blended up and it's going to be beautiful here in just a second. Okay, final step. I'm going to be using my blender for this. You're not going to add the preservative at this step, so you're not going to get the preservative or anything in your blender. Um, so I just use my plain old blender that I always use. I take, you can see how clumpy that's gotten. It's fine. I just take a couple scoops of this. This only takes me about two batches, and then we're going to be done. Now here is where you want to be careful. You don't want to blend this too long and get it too thick because you're going to have to try to get it poured into a bottle and pumped out of a bottle. So you want to just pulse. And when it starts doing this bubbling up on the top, you've went about far enough. You'll figure it out. If you get it too thick the first time, you won't make that mistake on your next batch. And you gotta think about what's the consistency of lotion. It's not thick like a body butter. Okay, so I've done the first round. I'm gonna go ahead and get the wax that is stuck to this scooper just because I need it in my recipe. And now I'm gonna pour the rest of this in here. And that's still really watery. So I'm gonna go a couple more pulses. And depending on if you get more of the wax in the first batch or this one, you know, one of your batches might be a little thinner and that's okay, when you mix them together, they're gonna equal out. One more pulse. Okay, that looks about perfect. That's as far as I'm gonna go. It's nice and bubbly and it's got a little thickness to it. It's about all this bowl will hold. Now, final steps is add your preservative and your fragrance. I made the switch from fragrance oils to only essential oils in my um, soap and lotion products because um, while fragrance oils are cheaper, all they have is a nice scent to them. And essential oils are actually healing for your body and for your skin. So not only can you smell nice, it can take care of your body as well. So um, that's why I did that. It costs a tad more, but it's, it's what I believe in. So you need to get that stirred up really well because that is your preservative. I have actually had people ask also about leaving the preservative out. I would not recommend it. This is milk. It's pasteurized, but it is still milk. This, that is what is gonna make this product last. You do not want a product growing bacteria and then rubbing that on your skin. That's a bad combo. Last step is put it in bottles. These are eight ounce bottles. I ordered these from Brambleberry. This is a one cup measuring cup, so that should just about fill this bottle up. You're gonna need a funnel. I don't know how you're gonna do it without a funnel. I guess maybe an icing bag or something like that, I'm not sure, but this is the easiest way I've found. And as I'm doing this, let me just wrap it up by saying, Brambleberry is a great place to get all of these ingredients. Um, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, or form but I am thankful they are around because it allows me a place to get all my supplies. All right, so that's what it makes. It makes six eight ounce bottles and then a lot of times it'll fill these two up. Uh, there was a little less, I probably could have scraped some out of the bowl. I filled these little ones up to finish it off to throw in our purse or whatever. Uh, for me and Emily or for the guys if they need to stick them in the truck or whatever. 
It's great for dry winter chapped hands, which is coming up. Give this a try. I just wanted to show it again to show it's super simple. Answer some of your questions that you've asked me over time that maybe I wasn't clear about the first time and just show you that it's a great recipe. I'm still making it. It's my only lotion recipe I've ever made because I love it so much. And this recipe has never once failed me, not one time. So that's a good testimony for a recipe if, if it's never messed up on you. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you guys later. God bless.